Um, what on earth? Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifty. This is Mid-Century Wasting. Hello everyone, here is a lovely view of my table. <laughs> I am going to be doing a video voiceover for this video. There was music playing in Goodwill, there were a million people in the Goodwill during this shopping trip, so I didn't talk much during the video. So I figure I will just talk you through it this way. And as I pick things up that I purchased, I will be showing you them right here such as this. So it's gonna be a shop along and a haul combined into one. I have been preferring doing it this way, especially if I need to do a voiceover anyway. Um, it's easy to just be on camera and show you the stuff as I got it as I'm talking about shopping for it. Now, you might say, Jamie, you aren't really on camera right now. All we're doing is staring at your dining table. And you're right. <laughs> How astute of you. Um, in case you hadn't heard, I am still recovering from skin cancer surgery on my face. So I'm not going to be putting my face on camera for the foreseeable future. It's um, kind of gruesome, kind of nasty looking, and nobody wants to see that, and I don't feel comfortable being on camera anymore. So this is how we're gonna do it. I actually recorded this shopping video before my surgery, so you do get to see my lovely face one more time as I talk to you in the car. Yeah, so lucky you. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get this footage started, and I will be right back here talking to you and showing you what we got once I grab something. So here we go. Hello everyone, welcome to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie, thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm about to go into a Goodwill. Yeah, I know. Um, I haven't been to a Goodwill in well over a year. Well, maybe it hasn't been well over a year, but it's been like a year. The last time I went, I came to this Goodwill, which is my favorite Goodwill, I will say that. I came right the first day they opened after the pandemic shut everything down. So. I came that day, I shopped, I got a few things. It was okay, but it wasn't anything to write home about, you know what I mean? And then I just haven't been back. I've been mostly sourcing at estate sales and that just does so well for me that I haven't really needed to come to the thrift stores. It's not that I'm anti-thrift store, anti-goodwill, it's just, it's so much work to get such a small amount of things for such a large amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. But you know, today was a spontaneous outing. I just went to an estate sale and now I've got all this time and I'm gonna go hit up some thrift stores because my mom happens to be in town and she spontaneously took the kids to go swimming at my aunt's house. So I've got till dinner time, which is amazing. And it's a Thursday, it's midweek. So let's see if maybe Goodwills have more stuff in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week. It is like 1.30 in the afternoon, so it's not like super early or anything, but let's just go in and I'm going in with low expectations. I'm probably gonna have to like voice over everything because they always have blasting music or maybe I'll just figure it out. You know, I'll try my best. I'm trying my best, you guys, just like Ruth Ann. All right, let's go in and see what they got. So here we are walking on into the Goodwill. For those of you who know the area, we are at the Magnolia and Adams Goodwill in Huntington Beach, California. This is normally a really good Goodwill for me. And as you see, I am going straight to the end caps and I've already found what is probably a piece of uranium glass. However, I did not have a black light and I wasn't sure what that was even for. It was a very strange little um, ladle. And so I left it, I put it back. And now I am just looking for pretty much anything vintage. Sometimes it's tough at our Goodwills to find any vintage stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff here that could be great for reselling, but you know, I'm into the vintage. 
So I spotted this back here. This looked kind of neat and tiki and older. And it does say 1970 on it. It was $4. And it was all chipped up. Yeah. So that is the other problem I come across all the time is if there is something vintage, it's damaged because, you know, there's a lot of competition around here. There's a lot of resellers around here. These shelves are pretty packed with stuff, but you know, they get picked over really quickly. So usually the only stuff I'm finding is, you know, the leftover stuff that's all chipped up. And so it's, you know, it can be a struggle. These bowls were interesting, probably not super old. The happy face was $2.99. As you can see, it was chipped, $3 and chipped, leaving it behind. I didn't know what this little Jaguar thing was, but that was pricey and yeah modern i just didn't have a whole heck of a lot of luck here on these little end caps i like all the blue glass but none of it is really worth anything to me so i'm still hunting this little hen on a nest was nice it's an interesting color and it was completely pulverized yep it was broken in half and it was $4. Completely chipped, not even chipped. It was just like broken in half completely and glued back together. And they still wanted $4 for it. So yeah, that kind of just summarizes this whole trip <laughs> or this whole Goodwill, you know, how things usually go for me. This little planter I liked a lot. It was $4 and you see me hemming and hawing and flipping it over, it's red wear. I put it back, I hemmed, I hawed. I love the blue glaze. Uh, half of it is for like a planter. It looks like the other half was for water and I put it back, but I did not put it back for long. As you can see, I went back for it. Yes, indeed. I did put it completely back. I set it down completely. And actually, as I picked up some more things, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back for that little planner. Cause it was kind of one of those things like, am I gonna wait in a long line and check out just for this one planter? I didn't really want to. But then once I started gathering other things, I was like, yeah, all right, I'll go back and get it. There's a lot of glare here right now in this room. So I apologize. You can't really get the gist of the glaze. It's so pretty. There you go. There, you can see it a little bit better now. It is so, so pretty. It's blue. It's kind of got some speckles and drips of different shades of blue and it's oh so glossy. Now it's in good shape except for like a considerable amount of residue in what I would consider like the little water part here. It's like this is a planter with drainage holes and then this you would fill with water and I don't even know what you would put in there. Maybe just like one little floating rose here have some light. There we go. There's some light. Let's put some light on the subject here. You can see how beautiful it is now. I'm like blinding myself with my light, but <laughs> at least now you can see it. So hopefully I'll be able to clean that up. If not, while in use, that won't be noticeable because, you know, if you have water in there, you won't really see those lines. But yeah, it was $4. Yeah, I will be re reselling it. I probably won't be making a ton of money off of it. But these little pottery pieces, they do well in my Etsy shop. And I like reselling them. It's not marked, but it is redware, as you can see. So maybe it was just like a little studio piece. Looks like it's better condition than like somebody just taking a pottery class, in my opinion. But hey, you never know. So yep, that was the first thing that I picked up. Now we are back shopping and I'm sticking to the end caps still. I usually start there, at least at this store. It's where they tend to put what they consider to be their gooder stuff. <laughs> their most interesting things, um, like a boob mug from Miami Beach, you know, who doesn't need that? This girl was pretty, but she was busted. The flowers on the front of her were completely gone. I'm digging back here to get to this little picture frame, which was cute and surprised me with a Made in Japan sticker on the bottom. 
it was three dollars and so it did have some age to it i considered it for a minute but decided not to just because it's not really my thing neither is that clown bell not my thing so we're still gonna move along here's a little christmas area not a dang vintage thing to be seen in here i mean a lot of this stuff is kind of from target or i saw pier one tag there here i'm trying to find uh an entry point <laughs> into an aisle where i don't have to go against the grain we're gonna get past the adult diapers and check out this lampshade which has a really cool pattern on it obviously it's more modern but i still liked the fabric of it we're hanging out in the furniture section this is the back of the store so it's kind of less crowded usually i can get very easily overwhelmed in a very crowded busy noisy store where everyone's crunched into the aisles even before COVID, I, I didn't ever really love that. So, uh, you know, I found some open space. So this is where I'm lingering. Checking out the books. I always just give them a glance. There's a, <laughs> in the package still, California Road Atlas. These planners were cute too, but you know, I make my own planner. I don't need that. And I don't really want to bother reselling stuff. That's not vintage. That's just not my thing. But I'm sure some people could find some plenty of goodies in here. Like I said, the stores, it's pretty packed. Here's a Jesus clock. One of those wooden 70s kinds of clocks. Okay, this piece of artwork. I did not get this, but I was very impressed by the artwork of it. I think this stippling technique is very cool looking. I've done pieces of artwork in the same technique back in high school. It's a lot of work, a lot of time. And so I appreciated that and I wanted to take a moment and admire it. It was only $3. I mean, someone put a lot of work into this. It's Madonna and Child. Yeah, I did leave it, but we got a good look at it. <laughs> now, this artwork caught my eye just because it's so bright and beautiful. $4 for the framed fabric. And it's, it's like birds. And it's, I don't know if it's silk. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know, and that's why I left it, but it caught my eye. I wanted to check it out. It might be something that if I figured out what it was and I wanted to look it up, I would regret that I left it there. I always also check out the kids' toys, the new stuff, you know, see if there's anything for my own kids because, you know, why not? Might as well check out the kids' toys, you know? Who's going to pay full price when you get the brand new thing at Goodwill for four bucks, five bucks, so... Not a lot of lamps, not a lot in the lamp department, nothing interesting. This penguin was a cutie patootie. He was $2 and I really liked him. He was just like a little home painted thing and he was chipped on his cheek. If he was not chipped on his cheek, I would have gotten him just because he was so cute. Somebody might be able to like touch him up, but eh, it, it's just not worth, not worth it for me from a resale standpoint. Here's some California Harley Davidson playing cards from Harbor City, California. Those were $2 sealed. That's probably something that someone might want to pick up. So I left it kind of sitting out <laughs> so it could be seen by somebody. Again, just not, I'm being picky. I don't need to buy just like tons and tons of inventory. I'm looking for vintage. That's just what I like the most myself. It's what's fun for me to resell. And so that's what I'm, I'm looking for. You can yell at me all you want for passing stuff up that has value, because I'm sure there is. This was interesting, $3. 
it was very pretty, very vintage, but of course, very broken. <laughs> Those flower petals were just destroyed. Oh, and this one broke my heart too. This is one of those ashtrays where the smoke comes out the nose. It's a little redware pig head. And he was so broken. The ear was broken. It had been repaired on the bottom. Oh, it was a shame. It was just a shame. All this stuff at the top here is too modern for me. Too new. So I'm digging. Digging. Just digging back, back in the depths of these shelves. Oh, so unorganized. So just messy. And <laughs> you know, if you like digging through stuff, this is your store. This is the place to go. Because there, like I said, it's, it's loaded. The shelves are loaded and the shelves are also spaced very close together. You know, there's only a foot of shelf room here before you're hitting the next shelf so they're only spaced like a foot apart this little doll was interesting i don't know about dolls she w did feel like she was porcelain but i don't know that's just not my wheelhouse at all so i continue on keep looking that vase was okay but i just didn't love it it was transfer and i don't know Maybe, maybe 80s-ish. Now, I don't really know what I'm trying to dig for here. Oh yeah, this little, this was a hand-painted ceramic piece. This little swan vase, 1990. It wasn't done very well, to be honest. Not to be snobby and act like I'm some great artist, but it just wasn't done very well, so I left it. This owl was an unpainted ceramic and would have been freaking cool if it wasn't completely busted and broken. And here's a little cat, new with tag. <laughs> I still thought it was cute. You know, some reseller should probably grab that. There's a broken alpaca and a pear and a seahorse. I liked the seahorse, but there's the brand new barcode. I think it was like big lots, maybe. <laughs> Not worth a whole heck of a lot. Now this is vintage. This is one of those little like stir chopper appliances, but it was brown. If it had been orange or yellow or something, I probably would have picked it up, but brown. Oh, okay, so this is interesting. Here's a Budweiser Stein. One of the Clydesdale Steins. I'll just pause here for a second to tell you a quick little story. Back in probably the early 80s or maybe even late 70s, I would have to ask her when exactly she did this, but my mom had a ski hat business. She had a small business running out of her home where she made knit ski hats that coordinated with brand name ski suits essentially. They were small quantities and she designed the patterns herself. And it was just like a little small business that she ran out of our garage. And it was really cool. She did that all through my childhood. And she was approached by Budweiser because she was able to make small quantities. They wanted her to make hats and scarves for their Budweiser Clydesdale commercial. The Clydesdale commercial, you know, the one. They still show it Every year, it's the old one running through the snow. I can't show a clip of it because then I'll get a copyright claim on this whole video, but it's the one. It's the old one from like the early 80s, late 70s with the jingly Christmas music and they're wearing red and white scarves and hats. And my mom made those. So that's her little like celebrity claim to fame moment. And so I always look for the Budweiser Stein from that year because the picture on it is of the guys wearing the scarves and the hats that she made. And she has one, she has one. So we're not really like looking for one or anything, but whenever I see them, I always wanna see like, oh, is this one my mom's, you know? <laughs> and so I always look at these. Anyway, there's my story. <laughs> Moving on now. That's why you will see me looking at Budweiser signs because I just want to see if it's the one with my mom's scarves on it. And now we are back to digging in the depths. 
So, God, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Oh yeah, look, there's another one. Again, not my mom's. That one said 50th anniversary on it. So, you know, that one wasn't gonna be it, but I still had to look, still had to look and see. Just a fun little Easter egg for me whenever I'm out shopping. I have seen them before too. Now, okay, this is probably my big find of the day. This was a little tea set, salt, pepper, creamer, covered lidded sugar, and teapot. And as you can see, I'm kind of like grabbing everything to inspect it all, see if it's busted. That piece was $3. And, you know, I'm just trying to decide like, oh, did I find something cool here? Are these gonna be completely pulverized? They definitely seemed vintage. Oh, don't knock it off the shelf. That was a little scary maneuver there. So I'm just inspecting it all. That one's $3. That's the teapot, checking it for cracks and chips. You know, I can tell that this is old. You know, that's what's drawing me to it. I'm like, wow, this is a really pretty cool vintage set here. And the fact that it had all the pieces, and then of course they priced the salt and pepper separately at a dollar each, which I'm like, why? Who's gonna buy just one? That's ridiculous. But anyway, they said Japan on the bottom. And yeah, so now I'm doing like math. This is me adding. I'm like, eh, eh, what? How much am I spending? Cause you know, everything is priced individually. And I ended up getting it all. So yes, of course I picked up the tea set. I had two, it was all there. I'm gonna hold this a different hand because I'm afraid. Um, yeah, so made in Japan, Japan marked on the bottom. You can see, hopefully if it focuses, look at that crazing. To me, that is like the yummy, delicious looking crazing. I love the way that looks. That's the real deal. This has age. Doesn't say made in Japan, it just says Japan. Lord help me if I could ever remember how to date things that say Japan versus made in Japan versus occupied Japan. Well, I can figure out occupied Japan because that's right after the war, but that's about it. The rest of it, I have no clue. <laughs> um, so the joyous thing about this, there was no damage. Now there's wear, there's age, but there's no big chips or chunks or cracks or repairs or anything. It was kind of amazing, honestly. Now there are like, I'm gonna say, I don't know, sloppiness? Is sloppiness the right word? The style of how the glaze was put on, it was slopped on there a little bit, but that's the style, you know what I mean? It was sloppy, it was messy. Here's a little bit of blue that was on this brown part. It's just how this was made. So this whole set ended up being $12. The teapot was $3. The lidded sugar was $3. The creamer with no lid, it was not meant to have a lid. It was $2 and then the salt and peppers were a dollar each, which go figure. I don't know why they price those at a dollar each. I'll never understand that. And I'll show you all the little pieces here because I'm just shocked that I found something at, like this at Goodwill. I really am. I never find true vintage Japan, hand-painted, complete sets. Like I would maybe find just this or maybe find just a lid, you know, or one salt and pepper shaker since they're priced separately, go figure. I was just thrilled with this. And they're, they're all, you know, made to look like little houses, peeling that off very carefully. You know, it's like this little like shack, hut, house motif. And again, we've got the, you know, sloppy sort of paint job. I, I don't, I hate calling it sloppy because it's super beautiful and I love the way this looks. And oh, it's just, it's got such a style to it. I mean, look, we have the original corks here still. That's fantastic. <laughs> but I mean, look at the, the paint job on that one. Like the black is just sort of smeared all over the thing, but you know, but then again, like the door has tons of detail. It's got the little like wood slats 
detail on it. So, you know, it's just the style of this glaze. If anyone, if this has a name, like a, is this, if this kind of glaze is called something, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Cause I don't know. I don't know this stuff. All I know is I found a complete tea set and no way, no how was I walking out of Goodwill without this set. So I was completely stoked on it. Here's the last piece, which I haven't shown you yet. There's the little lidded sugar, whole thing. And that's not a chip right there. That was like concerning me too, but it's, you can see it's like a pinch mark where they pinched the pottery together. So again, it's just one of those things it's just the crudeness, we'll say. It's the crudeness in the way this was designed, but gorgeous condition. Yay, me. I found something vintage at a Goodwill. Nothing short of a miracle. And yeah, so here I am with my proud, my proud cart shot. Oh, so proud <laughs> to have gotten that. And when I was checking out, they were very impressed. They were like, wow, a whole set of this teapot. And you know, that's really cool. And the people in line were like, ooh, that's really neat. So. I was like puffed up like a peacock, like, hell yeah, I found something awesome at Goodwill. Look at me go. There's a little Delft Blue windmill trivet. That was cute, but I just didn't want it. <laughs> I liked this ice bucket. It had a tag on it still. It was like a faux leather kind of ice bucket. It was $4. It had this little button detail. Unfortunately, it was kind of like scratched on the on the side. So I left that and it probably wouldn't have been something I would have wanted to deal with anyway, since it was kind of a modern piece. Now look at this shelf of kitchen utensils. Have you ever seen anything <laughs> like that? Oh gosh, so much digging, but some days I like it. Some days I just don't. Some days I just don't feel like digging and I think Maybe today as I'm doing this voiceover, I'm just like not into it. <laughs> the idea of digging through shelves right now is giving me like an eye twitch, but I was fine at the time. I thought, I think I was having fun on this day. Did not know what this was. It was a, a vase, I suppose, but it was just shaped very strange. Now I almost got this, um, you'll see here in a second. I almost got this first day of school little chalkboard thing. I don't know, for a split second, I thought like, am I that kind of mom? And then I ended up being like, no, I'm not. And I put it back down. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I'm not that kind of mom. I don't need that little first day of school chalkboard. So let's just keep on looking. I also pick up things like these little plastic plates for my kids whenever I come across them. Here's a little Hello Kitty lunchbox. and a tin that was like totally wrapped up in plastic still. That was interesting. This candle holder was kind of nice. It was covered in wax, so you know somebody had been using it, which that's not the end of the world, but it was also just very big and bulky and I didn't really want to deal with it. I didn't think it would be worth it to deal with it. Let's put it that way. There's another tin. I do like looking at tins. I do like picking up tins. This scale would have been awesome if it had its hand still. I love me a vintage scale. I have a really cool vintage scale. There's a tripod. You can always find tripods at Goodwill. There's always about 15 different tripods. That was only four bucks. Good price. Good price if you need a tripod. There's another one. And there's a blue one behind it too. It looks a little older. I think that's like the exact same model as my tripod, not one that I was just looking at. And there's another one right up there on that shelf. Tripods everywhere. Okay, now this. Let's just take a moment to inspect this martini shaker. We've got Batman. We've got army men and little plastic figures glued around the sides for $3. And I am so perplexed. This is some sort of little thing somebody put together. What? I'm confused, I'm dismayed, and that's the end of the video for now. So I did pick up more things. There is gonna be a part two because these videos where I end up showing you the stuff and doing a voiceover at the same time, yeah, they can run long. <laughs> 
And I think now is a fine time to say if you ever see anything in any of my videos that I pick up for reselling and you're interested in purchasing that item, don't wait for me to list it on eBay or Etsy. Send me an email. Send me an email right away. Be the first one to send me an email and I'll make you a deal before I list it anywhere or sell it in a live sale or sell it however I'm selling it. I would rather just sell it directly to my viewers. So please, if at any time you see something in one of my videos that you wish to purchase, go ahead and send me an email. We'll talk about a price. And I promise I'll give you a better price than I would if I was listing it on eBay because then I don't have to pay the eBay fees, which is glorious. So anyway, stay tuned for part two to see what else I got on this trip. Thank you for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.